All right, algebra, we've got um, absolute value. I can solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Well, we're just going to be working with equations of this unit. All right, um, so recall the definition of absolute value. Remember, it's the, it's a distance, right? Um, and generally find that distance from zero. So how many solutions does x equal 5 have? Meaning um, the absolute value of what is 5? Right, so we've got, well, 5, but what else is the absolute value of 5? Negative 5, right? So essentially, with absolute value, we're always going to have two answers because x can equal 5 and x can equal negative 5, right? So if I were to put an x there, so x equals 5, x equals negative 5. Always two answers, right? So we set it up a little different, all right? So since x can equal negative 4 and 4, you're going to take whatever it is in the absolute value, and you're going to set it equal to 4, and whatever it is in the absolute value, you're going to set it equal to negative 4, okay? And then if you count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is negative 4. That's graphing it, okay? So the graphing is pretty simple. So whatever's in the absolute value, I write twice, and I don't change that. I only change, in this case, the right side, okay? And I make one of them positive, I don't change, and one negative. All right, so here I'm taking what's in the absolute value, and I'm gonna write that twice. Remember, I want whatever's in here can equal 15, but whatever's in there can also equal negative 15, right? Like, that could be negative 15, so 9 plus x and 9 plus x. Oops, sorry. So notice I didn't change that, okay? Now let's solve. Minus 9 minus 9 and x equals 6 minus 9 minus 9. And x equals same sign sum. And my negative is bigger, so we're going to get a negative answer. 24. All right? Um, and so if you're like, what? How can we get a negative answer? Well, we know that right here, x equals negative 4 and x equals 4, right? Those are our two answers. So if I were to plug this back in, it's got to be true, right? So well, let's see. Let's work right up here. Um, if x is 6, 9 plus 6 is 15, right? So the absolute value of 15 is 15. Now let's plug in negative, four, so negative 24. So 9 minus 24 is negative 15. So is the absolute value of negative 15, 15? Yep, it is. So that's why those are our answers. All right, so again, this inside can equal 2, but it can also equal negative 2, right? So I'm going to set it equal to 2 and negative 2. What's inside here doesn't change. So I call this my our absolute value side, and we write it twice with no changes. I call this the non-absolute value side. Doesn't matter because eventually it will be. Um, but this is my positive negative side, okay? So you're always going to have, you're gonna pick one side to be your absolute value side that you write twice, and you're gonna pick the other side to be your negative positive side. Okay, so this is my absolute value side, and I write it twice. Okay, that's written it twice. This is my positive negative side. I've written it once positive and one's negative, okay? So I'm writing that multiply by four and multiply by four because those are dividing. And x equals eight, multiply by four and multiply by four and x equals negative eight. Well, let's see if that's true, okay? Um, the absolute value of eight divided by four, that's two and that's two, there we go. Now the absolute value of negative eight divided by four well, that's a negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So it ends up working out. <coughs> I'm sorry I didn't graph these other two. Um, negative 24, that's probably 0, and that's probably 6-ish. Okay? And here we are. If this is 0, let's go 8 and negative 8. Okay? All right, and let's come down here. So the absolute value um, of what equals negative 4? What do you notice about this one? Press pause and take a second to think about what you think about this answer. Okay, maybe you're thinking, well, any absolute value is going to be positive, right? 
So there's, I mean, even the absolute value of 4 is 4, not negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is still 4, right? So when we've got an absolute value set equal to a negative number, there's no solution. Okay. All right. Ready? Here we are. Um, so I've got my absolute value sign that I'm going to write twice. And this is my side I'll make positive, and one positive, meaning I won't change a thing, and negative. Okay, so x minus 4. Sometimes I do this. I write that twice. I write 1 without changing, and I make 1 negative, right? Because what's inside here can equal 8, and what's inside there can equal negative 8. Add 4, add 4, add 4, add 4. Now, if you are not keeping up, you need to be pressing pause. And you need to make sure these notes are filled out. Okay, so go ahead and do that. You can also slow the video down. Okay, so if we're moving too fast, this is a video. Go at your own pace, please. Okay, um, x equals 12. And x equals different signs differ. My negative is bigger, so negative 4. So let's make sure that works. 12 minus 4 is 8. And negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is 8, so we're good. So checking my work is always nice. So 0, if that's 4, sorry, negative 4, that's about 12. Let's graph those. Okay. Um, this unit, our graphing is going to be pretty simple and straightforward like this. All right. Oh, we've got it set equal to a negative 40, and there isn't anything that we can take the absolute value and get a negative. So that's no solution. All right. Now you try these down here, please. So go ahead and press pause, get these done, and then come back. Okay. All right, so you should have pressed pause. You've got x equals 6. If you're done, go ahead and set that to an, a faster speed, right, and check your answers if you want. So it should be 0, negative 6, and positive 6, and graphed there. All right, so I've got my absolute value side that I'm writing twice, x minus 1 and x minus 1. And then I've got my other side that I'm going to write once, positive, no changes, and negative. Okay, add 1, add 1, and x equals 3. Add 1, add 1. And x equals negative 1. <laughs> different signs different. My negative is bigger. So let's make sure that works. I'm going to go ahead and check my work down here because I have more room down here. Um, well, actually, right here. So 3 minus 1. So I'm plugging in 3 for x. That's 2. There we go. We're good. And negative 1. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, which equals 2. Awesome. We're good to go. All right, and right here, we've got the absolute value of 4 minus x equals negative 10, and absolute value can equal negative 10. Hopefully you realized that this is just no solution. Awesome. Oh, and the graphing. Sorry, here we go. So if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, there we go. Okay. Um, I know this says day 2, but this actually we are gonna to get to, and this is gonna be day two. All right, so here we go. We, you might notice now that the absolute value is not alone, right? So I have more numbers <laughs> with this absolute value. And so I can't take my, so remember we took the absolute value side times two, and the other sides are plus minus. I can't do this until my absolute value is alone, okay? And right now my absolute value is not alone. Right? So it's kind of like boxing the variable. If you think back to one and two steps, to get that four away, you subtract four and subtract four. Right? And four minus four is zero. Ooh, this is where it gets interesting. 16 minus four x equals zero. So ready, I've got my absolute value side that I would write twice. But think about this. How is there a negative and a positive to a zero? Nope. There isn't. So there's only one answer when your absolute value is equal to zero. Okay, otherwise you're always going to have two answers. But here's the <laughs> exception. So I'm just going to do 16 minus 4x equals zero. Right? Minus 16 minus 16. Negative 4x equals negative 16. Divide by negative 4. 
divide by negative 4, and x equals a positive 4. Okay, so if this is 0, this is 4. Uh, let's go ahead and check our work. Okay, um, plug in 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0, plus 4 is 4. So there we go. Our solution is x equals 4. All right, ready? Let's come on over here. All right, so I, we always want to look, is my absolute value alone? So I can cover it up, and it is not. So this has to get away, right? And you've got to think, well, how can I get this negative 2 away from it? Um, and one thing I like to think about is this absolute value, you know how to get x alone, right? When you're solving a two-step equation, you know how to get x alone. It's the same way you get an absolute value alone. So I'm going to pretend like this says, ready? I'm going to treat this absolute value and everything that's in it like it's just x. Okay, so I've got negative 2 plus, not the absolute value of negative x plus 5, but x equals 5. Well, you know how to get negative 2 away. You would add 2, then you would add 2, right? Well, we're doing the same thing. So add 2 and add 2. Okay, now the absolute value is alone. Negative x plus 5 is equal to 7, all right? And we're positive over here. So my absolute value set part, I'm writing twice. So negative x plus 5 equals, and negative x plus 5 equals. And then I'm going to have a positive, one that I don't change, and a negative, one that I distribute that negative, right? Um, so subtract 5, subtract 5, and negative x equals 2. But I've got to divide by that negative 1, divide by the negative 1. And x equals negative 2. There's not a lot of room here. Um, yeah, okay. Minus 5, minus 5. Negative x equals negative 12. Same sign sum, and my negative is bigger. Divide by that negative 1, divide by the negative 1, and x equals 12. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. I'm going to plug those back in and make sure they actually work. So I've got negative 2 plus negative, negative 2 plus 5 equals 5. Okay, so we've got 2 plus 5. That's the absolute value of 7, right? Because um, those chop, chop, and they add. Uh, negative 2 plus 7. This ends up being a positive 7, and that ends up equaling 5. We're good to go. And over here, uh, 12. Negative 2 plus negative 12 plus 5 equals 5. All right, different signs differ. My negative is bigger, so this ends up being negative 7 plus negative 2, but that becomes positive equals 5. And there we go. That equals 5 as well, so we're good to go. All right. And over here, this is where you really, it's going to help you to think about this absolute value. So 4 plus 6 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Well, we want to get this alone, right? Um, and that equals negative 44. Um, <laughs> you know what? We're going to change this. Make that negative real quick. Yes, change your notes. Okay, so erase that. That's a negative 6. Okay, um, we're going to treat this absolute value like it's just the letter X. And how would we get just the letter X alone? Whoops, I am so sorry, guys. I was off the paper. So here we go. Sorry. I rewrote it here. So 4 minus 6 times. I'm going to treat that absolute value, the entire absolute value, like it's X. I also changed this positive to a negative. So if you could do that really quick. Okay. Because here's the thing, you notice that that's negative 44, right? So I cannot assume right now that it's not possible, okay? So if this were a two-step equation, I would box this variable term, and I wouldn't multiply first. I would subtract 4, and I would subtract 4, right? So I've got negative 6x. Oh, I'm going to do the same thing up here now, okay? So I'm going to erase all this. But this is still a minus the sake of this problem actually working. 
Okay, minus 4, minus 4. All right, so now I've got negative 6 times the absolute value of x minus 3 equals, same sign sum, negative 48. My negative is bigger, right? Okay, so equals negative 48. Think about it. If this were a two-step equation with just an x, you would know what to do. Divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. So I'm going to divide by negative 6. I'm going to divide by negative 6. Okay, this right here is not something you need to do. This is just to show you why we're subtracting and then dividing last. Okay? Um, they cancel here, just like they cancel here. And I would be left with x equals 8. Okay, so now I'm left with x minus 3. The absolute value of x minus 3 equals 8. All right? So we had to do almost an entire two-step equation. Now we can actually start our problem. Okay? <coughs> so I need an extra piece of scrap paper. If you do too, please press pause and go get one. All right? Because now I have got x minus, x minus 3 is equal to 8. So here's my absolute value side that I write twice, x minus 3 and x minus 3. This can equal 8. This can also, inside of here, can equal negative 8. So plus 3, plus 3. And x equals 11. Okay. And plus 3, plus 3. x equals, different signs differ, and my negative is bigger, negative 5. Okay, so let's plug it in and make sure. Um, we've got 4 minus, I did change that. 6 times the absolute value of 11 minus 3 equals negative 44. And then I'm going to write 4 minus 6 times negative 5 minus 3 equals negative 44. You might notice right now that 8 minus, sorry, 11 minus 3 is 8, and negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. So we get the same answer, right? So this is 8, 4 minus 6 times 8 and 4 minus 6 times 8. Um, 48, negative 48. So that's negative 44, the absolute value of negative 4. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Um, I plugged it back into the original before I took out that negative, right? This is good. Um, that's negative 44. And that's what I got, right? Because my negative is bigger. Okay? And over here, <coughs> 4 minus 48, same exact thing. Okay? All right. So you try these two right here. Press pause. Go ahead and get that done, please. And then join me when you're ready. All right? Once those are done. All right, hopefully you've pressed pause. Hopefully you did these two. Um, get as far as you need before you feel like you need to. So if you didn't get very far. So I'm going to divide by negative 3, and I'm going to divide by negative 3. Right? So I can't assume that this is no solution until, I'm, until I have my absolute value all alone. All right. So 1 minus 2 thirds x is equal to 3. There we go. That's positive now. Okay, so now I've got... Um, 1 minus 2 thirds x equals 3. And then I've got 1 minus 2 thirds x equals negative 3. Right? So my absolute value I'm writing twice. This I'm writing the positive, not changing. That I'm negative. Minus 1, minus 1. Negative 2 thirds x equals 2. Right? And then we multiply by the reciprocal, which is a negative 3 halves. Multiply negative 3 halves, those cross reduce, and x equals negative. I'm going to cross reduce 3. <coughs> and over here, minus 1, minus 1, negative 2 thirds equals negative 4. Multiply by negative 3 halves, multiply by the reciprocal um, over 1, those cross reduce. Sorry, it's supposed to be an x there. And x equals, let's cross reduce, negative 6. All right? Okay, and let's come on over here. 
Um, all right. So hopefully you, if you haven't started this one, at least give it a try and press pause. If I had to move one of these numbers first, which would it be? Okay. Hopefully you knew that this is like 6x. Okay. If you box that variable term. Okay. That is not what we do first. We're going to subtract 4 and we're going to subtract 4. Okay. Now we've got, I'm going to erase this. All right. It's a positive. 6 x minus 3 equals 36, right? Okay. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. And there we are. Now I have my absolute value alone. Now I can start to do this. Um, I write twice. x minus 3 equals 6. And I'll write it twice. x minus 3 and the negative 6, right? Because this can equal 6, and it can equal negative 6. Plus 3, plus 3, and x equals 9. Plus 3, plus 3, and x equals negative 3. All right? Um, check your answers. Go ahead and do that, please. And then um, we'll start here tomorrow.